Hi, superstars. It is time for English. We are on unit eight, week two, and our weekly concept is my USA. What do you know about your country? This week, we're going to learn about symbols like our flag that stand for the United States. Let's look at this symbol right here. This is the Statue of Liberty. And the statue is very tall. Is the statue green? Yes, it is. It's very tall and it's green. So can you name two words that describe the Statue of Liberty? Tall and green. That is correct. Let's watch a video. This video is going to talk about what we know about our country. What do you know about our country? The United States has many important places. This is the Statue of Liberty in New York. It stands for freedom. This is a statue of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It is a national memorial in Washington, D.C. Dr. King was a great American. He worked hard to change laws that were not fair to African Americans. His dream was that all people would be treated equally. In California, you can see the Golden Gate Bridge. It is one of the longest bridges in the United States. What places in the United States do you know about? Let's look at some pictures about my USA. USA stands for United States of America. This is a picture of the Liberty Bell and it's in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The bell stands for freedom. It is called the Liberty Bell. This is the Capitol building and it's in, the, in Washington, DC. The members of the United States government meet here. This is called the Capitol building. And this is the American flag. This is a symbol of our country. Americans show the flag to celebrate freedom. Let's go over some vocabulary words that you'll be hearing throughout this unit. The first one is country. Repeat after me, country. The United States of America is the country where we live. You can see all the states. Our next vocabulary word is careful. Careful. The teacher was careful when he put staples in the stapler. Careful. To be careful is to pay close attention to what you are doing or saying. Careful. Travel. One way to travel is to fly in an airplane. Travel. To travel is to move from one place to another. Travel. Purpose. Purpose. The purpose of a pencil box is to hold pencils. The purpose of something is the reason it is made or used. Purpose. Connect. When you connect two things, you put them together. Connect. I can connect pieces of yarn by tying them together. Connect. This. This is a high frequency word. 
this. I was on this street. This. Let's spell this together. T H I S. This. What? What is another high frequency word? What? What do zebras eat? What? It looks like they're eating grass. Let's spell the word what together. W H A T. What? All right, superstars, I want you to go over your vocabulary words until you are familiar with them. All right, we're going to read about a girl named Anna who travels to Washington, DC. So what do you think Anna will see there? We're gonna read and find out. So let's talk about the main topic. The main topic is what the text is mainly about and details tell more about the main topic. So as we read, as you listen, I want you to look for evidence in the text that relates to the main topic and key details. Okay, as you reread, Rereading is going to help you better understand the text. So you can either re listen, that means listen again, or reread a book. And that's going to help you understand the text better. So as I read that Anne is going to Washington, D.C., I didn't understand why this city was important, but I reread it and I understand that it's the capital of the United States. So rereading helped me understand something that I missed the first time I read this story. Anna goes to Washington, DC. All right, we are going to begin. Anna, Anna goes to Washington, DC by Renee Collado Linez, illustrated by Angela Dominiquez. Okay, so remember the author writes the words and the illustrator draws or takes the pictures that's in the story. When Anna goes to Washington DC is an informational text. So it gives information about real places and it often has both text and photographs. We are in Washington, D.C. It is the capital of the United States, said Anna to Mama and her little sister Sarah. Anna ran and hugged her tia, Luisa, and said, I cannot wait to visit the historic places. So historic means something important in history. So she is excited to visit historical places. The next morning, Anna and Sarah were holding a large map. Look, Sarah, we will visit all these places. Map labels, Pennsylvania Avenue, the White House, the Ellipse, New York Avenue, the Supreme Court, Constitution Avenue, Pennsylvania Avenue, Lincoln Memorial, 17th Street Northwest, Washington Monument, U.S. Capitol, Library of Congress, Independence Avenue, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial. All right, so they were pretty much reading everything that's on the map that they're going to go visit. Tia, Luisa, and Mama waved American flags. They gave flags to Anna and Sarah. Anna opened the front door and said, 
Ready, set, let's go. I know that the title of the book is Anna Goes to Washington, D.C. I read that the family is in Washington, D.C. and that they are going to visit historical places on the map. I think that Washington, D.C. is going to be the main topic of this text. This is the National Mall, Tia Luisa said. I don't see any stores, Sarah said. There are no stores here, Tia Luisa replied. Sarah turned around and around and said, I get it. Instead of stores, this mall has historic buildings. Where is the family on these pages? They are on the National Mall where there are lots of historic buildings. How did you know? By looking at the photographs and reading the text. What is this tall building? Asked Anna. It looks like a giant number one, Sarah said. This is the Washington Monument, Tia Luisa said. It was built to honor the first president or leader of the United States, George Washington. So when I first read this page, page 10, I didn't understand the giant number one. What did it mean? But when I reread the page and I looked at the photo, now I understand that Sarah is talking about the tall building in the picture, the Washington Monument. Mama opened her purse. Look, his face is on the dollar bill and the quarter, Anna cried. So here when it says Anna cried, that means she called out. She wasn't crying. She was calling out. Who is this tall man sitting on that big chair? Anna asked. He is Abraham Lincoln, our 16th president. He ended slavery and helped keep the United States together, Tia Luisa said. He is also on the pennies that Sarah and I put inside our piggy banks, Anna said. So why is Anna holding a penny on page 13? If you're not sure... Listen carefully for the answer as we reread page 13. So let's listen again. Who is this tall man sitting on that big chair? Anna asked. He is Abraham Lincoln, our 16th president. He ended slavery and helped keep the United States together, Tia Luisa said. He is also on the pennies that Sarah and I put inside our piggy banks, Anna said. So, Abraham Lincoln's face is on the penny. He was the 16th president of the United States, and that is his monument on page 12. So, that is Abraham Lincoln. Who lives in this beautiful house? Anna asked. The president of the United States lives in the White House, Tia Luisa said. Can we knock and say hello? Anna and Sarah asked. The president is a busy person, Tia Luisa said, but I have tickets to get inside. Yes, said everyone. What historic building does the family see here? The White House. Why is it important? The president lives there. This building is bigger than my whole school, Anna said. It is the Capitol building. They make laws here, Tia Luisa said. Are laws like school rules? Anna asked. Tia Luisa and Mama nodded. We need to follow rules or we will get in trouble, Anna said to Sarah. What details do you learn about Washington, D.C. on these pages? What is this photograph showing? 
it's showing the Capitol building. It's in Washington, DC, and this is where laws are made. So that is the Capitol building. Do you remember what a law is? Laws are rules set by the government. Look, there are also statues sitting on chairs here, Anna pointed at them. This is the Supreme Court, Tia Luisa said. When people do not agree, the Supreme Court decides what is fair. The Supreme Court is like a teacher. Teachers talk to children when they argue, Anna said. Do you know what fair means? So this is the Supreme Court. And it says when people don't agree, the Supreme Court decides what is fair. Fair means you're not favoring one or another. Fair. So that's the Supreme Court. Welcome to the Library of Congress, Tia Luisa said. There are so many beautiful books here, said Anna. I love to read books to Sarah. Almost all of the books published in the United States are here, Tia Luisa said. I would love to read them all one day, Anna said. Tia Luisa and Mama smiled. So where are Anna and her family? On page 20. They're at the Library of Congress. So they said almost all of the books published in the United States are here. That's what Louisa said. What does published mean? Published means printed. So almost all the books printed or published in the United States are in the Library of Congress. They went back to the National Mall and walked across Independence Avenue. Look, I know the man in the statue, Anna said. He is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and he had a dream for everyone to be treated fairly. This is his memorial, Tia Luisa said. I will work for my dreams, too, Anna said. What monument does the family see on these pages? Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Anna and her family walked among the flowering cherry trees. Look at the beautiful cherry blossoms, Anna said. These trees are a gift from Japan to celebrate the friendship between our two countries, Tia Luisa said. They sat down and watched the paddle boats go by. Anna hugged Tia Luisa and said, Thank you for this wonderful day. I will never forget it. So paddle boats are a small boat moved by pedaling with your feet. So when I read that there were cherry blossoms blooming and paddle boats in the water, I make a picture in my mind of being there myself. And this helps me understand Anna's excitement. Let's open our close reading companion to page 89. You know what to put at the top, your name, your first name, last name, and the date. Anna goes to Washington, D.C. Why does the illustrator include photos in the map? Circle yes or no for each question. So do you remember when they were looking at the map of where to go and what to see? So here they're asking questions. Do the photos show that the places are real? Do the photos show what the places look like? Let's go back and look at the map so we can compare. So here's the map that they're looking at and it's showing the different historical sites that they can go visit. So there's pictures, there's names, 
and locations of these places on the map, right? So let's go and answer the questions. All right, so number one, do the photos show that the places are real when you looked at the map? Remember it's saying, why does the illustrator include photos in the map? So are the photos showing us that these places are real? Yes. Do the photos show what the places look like? Yes, they do. Do the photos show us where Anna lives? No, it wasn't showing us where she lives. Do the photos on the map show us where Anna is? Did it show us where she was on the map? No. So down here, we're going to complete this sentence. It says, the photos in the map show what? What do the photos in the map show? They show that the places are real, right? And what else did they show us? What the places look like. So over here, we can put and also, oops, and. Okay, now let's turn to page 90. All right, let's look at page 90. What is real and what is make-believe? And you're going to draw what is real here and what is make-believe right here. All right, let's look back in our story so we can see what is real and what is make-believe. All right, let's look at page 10 here. So we see that this is the Washington Monument, right? So is that real? Yes, that is real. How about these characters? Are these characters real? No, these characters are make-believe. So the people in this text are make-believe, but the photographs of the historical sites are real. So let's go back to page 90. Okay, so again, what is real and what is make-believe? So you're going to draw what is real. So you can draw one of the historical sites. You can draw the Washington Monument over here. And then what was make-believe? The characters were make-believe, right? They were not real. So down here, we are going to complete the sentence. The photographs in the text are real. So you're going to write real. And we're going to put a period, not a comma. And then over here, the people are what? So the people in this text, in the story are what? They are make-believe. And we put a period. All right, superstars, good job. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye.